Uh, good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, Mr. Williams. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, welcome to our 52nd NEOC daily report for today, 21st of May, 2020. Again, I wish to begin with my team. First to be last, so I can be the last to be first. We continue with the updates as per the uh, request being made via telephone to the NEOC 911-311 and the EOC on Nevis. It's the EOC and not the NEOC on Nevis. Okay. Uh, we look at the figures and again, uh, there seems to be a reduction in the numbers of calls to both the EOC on Nevis and the NEOC on St. Kitts. That is a good thing. Compliance Task Force continues its work with visiting a total of 63 business places. I, I think that we are making headway, progress, right, Ms. Jacob, in ensuring that the business become, are becoming more compliant. And the figures will illustrate. Uh, we are looking at today, most of the percentage, according to the number of businesses visited, are uh, within the 80 to 90% range. So that is very good. And I want to commend all those business places who are doing their part to ensure that we are being compliant. Uh, liquor, we look at the liquor establishments, and we are looking at these numbers. And uh, three of these businesses are selling liquor by retail. So that is a drastic reduction in the numbers from previous presentations. The personal hygiene is excellent. The numbers are very satisfactory to us. It means that our citizens are doing their best to ensure that they protect themselves. Okay, today we would have seen the arrival of a cruise ship from the Caribbean Cruise Line uh, business, and it was the vision of the seas. Uh, we were expecting three citizens, however, there, were, there was only one, sorry, only one citizen disembarked here and St. Kitts. And let me tell you how this process went. The, air, the cruise lines would have made a request to the, the different countries uh, within the Caribbean who had nationals working within these ships. Uh, the request came uh, to the Ministry of Transport. It also came to the, via the local agent, came to the uh, office of the chief medical officer. The chief medical officer, along with the ministry, brought it to the attention of the task force. The task force would have met and we would have given the recommendation to the cabinet as per the operational uh, means in which we wanted the disembarkation of the national. The national was, the, I'm sorry, the cruise ship would have used a tender to bring the national to the pier. And then from there, the environmental health officers would have done their work to ensure that all protocols uh, within the COVID-19 regulations were followed. The citizens were then taken to the government quarantine facility where they are currently uh, located. I was also informed that the citizen was repatriated from the port of Nassau in the Bahamas, and they would have left the Bahamas on the 17th and arrived this morning at approximately 8.30 a.m. Uh, in the waters of St. Kitts uh, and Nevis. We continue with the information regarding the movement at our ports. There were two flights that were approved by the port authorities and by extension, the task force and cabinet ultimately to have repatriation of US and Canadian citizens. The first flight we would have seen, which was the first flight which was uh, managed by Kayan Jet. And I want to thank Mr. Lewis for the excellent job that he does in ensuring that all the regulations 
are followed. We had at this, uh, this morning two U.S. citizens and two Canadian citizens that would have departed at about 11.52 a.m. to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, then, uh, secondly, we would have had Seaborn, very pretty plane. I don't know. I saw a lot of videos and, and Facebook and social media where persons were sending me of this pretty pink and white and black plane that would have arrived to repatriate a total of 27 U.S. citizens from the RLB International Airport. These citizens were repatriated via San Juan. Uh, this flight uh, was, a request as, was as a result of a request made by the U.S. Embassy to the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. I continue. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Merle Leibard. Uh, thank you, Merle from the St. Kitts Diabetes Association, who donated 1,000 EC dollars to the NEOC for the cause. And that cause is as we continue to fight COVID-19. I will continue reminding you that we are preparing for the hurricane season. And today, I would have seen uh, some of the conversation that took place of a meeting hosted by Urika Lennon Petty and kudos to Urika Lennon Petty who is leading the charge at the moment in ensuring that we start to prepare the country for the hurricane season. And Ms. Petty would have met with the initial clearance and search and rescue uh, national subcommittee, uh, which is led by the defense force, the commander of the defense force. And she, able, chaired that, she ably chaired that meeting and provided information and provided guidance as to the little things that need to be done to ensure that we are ready. However, I want to advise you to begin your emergency preparedness for the hurricane season. What do I mean by that? Make a plan, build a kit, and be informed. So make a plan. What do I mean by make a plan? If you have a family, or even for yourself, know the emergency numbers. Know the persons who are responsible within the districts as the liaison of officers or personalities with the National Emergency Operations Center. We have district managers. We have district volunteers. Know your emergency contacts, such as the numbers for the fire department, police department, and also know where your shelters are. Understand where will the family meet if everybody becomes lost. S establish a meeting point. And if we move along, move along, building a kit, have something in place. For example, you see the illustration. Have your little radio, uh, you know, battery, battery radio, the uh, small AM, FM radios. Uh, have a little bit of non-perishable items. Ensure that you have a safe... Uh, <clears throat> first aid kit, and also ensure that you have water. And of course, if anybody doesn't have a cell phone, then I mean you are living in the stone ages. Uh, I'm certain everybody does. So ensure that your cell phone is charged and you have connectivity and ensure that you top it up. So let's try it. I'm asking you for a $20 top up, okay? Um, these are some of the things that we can do in order to ensure that we are prepared. So thank you again for listening, and we look forward to your questions.